All right. Welcome, Will Francis, to the Self-Employment Success Podcast. Happy to be here. We are uh, laughing a little bit because before I hit record, we kind of were just doing the podcast because what yep. Will's does is fascinating. And so we were already kind of diving into it. Um, so we had to force ourselves to hit record. So we'll run it all back. <laughs> um, but Will's, to get started, tell us a little bit about who you are yeah. and what your business is and what you do and what yeah. kind of where it stands today. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, my name is Wills Francis and I'm founder and partner at um, a firm called Former Colleagues that I started about three years ago. And um, the way that we understand ourselves, at least as um, a multidisciplinary brand experience practice. And so our real sweet spot is helping organizations um, dig really deep into like their personal truths, shape their identities and, and kind of explore new modes of creative expression that um, speak to not only their brand, but um, connect with their audiences in really powerful ways. So like in the broadest sense, we're kind of playing in a number of different worlds, whether it's like design or, or web development or corporate strategy or videography, like all of those are kind of tools in our tool belt, but the thread and what we're really trying to do is pull all those worlds together and help, um, help brands really communicate and think about their brand out of the context of like images, video, colors, um, even like language into more of like an experiential concept. Mm -hmm. So in the sense that, um, you know, every time that a, a person interacts with your brand, you're creating that um, brand experience. And so we, we really help organizations think through what that experience is and what it should be. Um, and so we do that across like a super wide range of organizations and, um, and industries and even, you know, kind of product categories. So like even right now, we're doing a ton of work with like a commercial office equipment manufacturer or like a high growth technology firm or a series of restaurants or even like our self own self initiated projects. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like the thread is trying to um, help folks think about brand in more comprehensive terms and think about brand more creatively than, well, what is our website and, and what does our logo look like? And mm -hmm. um, so that kind of lets us, kind of branch into a lot of different interesting worlds uh, as we work with our clients. Yeah. I mean, I, I can imagine that that is yeah. fascinating. And and when I think of brand as ignorant as it is, it's like website. Cause that's kind of what, I, when I started yeah. just what I did first, I was like, how do I communicate what I do? Yeah. yeah. But you're right. Like in my own journey, I've had to think through, like, I don't just serve anybody who can fog a mirror. Like yeah. who do I like serving? Who am I good at serving? Right. And when, how do a, how do I attract them? And B, yeah. like when, like you said, anytime they're interacting with PeaceLink, mm -hmm. I want them to be having a very specific type of experience. Right. And that involves a lot of like soul searching on me and, yeah. and hard work to say, like, how do I do that? Yeah. It, what is that? And how do I do it? And yeah. that's just like, for me, not my skill set. <laughs> well, it's like so interesting because, um, like the, the part that's fascinating for us is like digging into that psychology of where like every time that you interact with peace link, for instance, like there is some mental connection that's happening. And some of that might be happening with like what your web experience is. Some of that might be happening with what your website looks like, but more often than not, it's in your case, like it has to do with the interaction with you or like mm -hmm. listening to this podcast or, you know, reading some of your content on LinkedIn or whatever it might be. Um, and so all of those things kind of contribute to your brand experience. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're trying to dig into those details in the most thoughtful way possible and um, and make sure that all of those interactions are kind of lining up and pointing to the same direction. So that's why I say we like kind of play in so many different worlds depending on what the client needs and kind of what their what their situation is and what that customer journey or what that user journey or experiential journey needs to look like mm -hmm. um, because we have to be thinking about all those things at once. So that's, that's when the fun kind of comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it's so interesting. So how did you find your way into this world? Like how did yeah. you get started in this space? Cause it's, a, it's in many ways, niche it's in many oh, ways, yeah. like 
also so like you said there's so many disciplines to it like there had to have been a journey to kind of get you there so what yeah. did that look like so um i was a you know i was a college student that really didn't know what i was truly interested in and but i like there were all these kind of ideas that i wanted to kind of explore like i was i was into literature i was really into um into architecture i was really into even like the concept of brand even though i not i couldn't really um maybe articulate it in that way in those days um but i i wanted to enter some field where like creativity was kind of the driving force mm -hmm. behind what the daily work looked like and um <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> and so when i was a uh I, I ended up interning and then ended up working at this firm called Rule 29 in Chicago. And it's a creative practice. Um, a branding studio got mentored by an incre incredible creative director named Justin Aarons. And, um, and that was really where I cut my teeth in so many of these disciplines. He's built uh, a really high performing firm, but a firm that we all had like a lot of freedom to kind of um, explore different disciplines, engage with a lot of different types of client projects. And so I learned a ton through those couple years of working there. And at the time, I actually met my uh, creative producer who was also working in the same firm, this guy, Bob Davidson. And so when it was time for me to leave the firm, Bob actually left the firm around the same time for different reasons. And, um, and so I kind of wanted to pursue other things. I kind of moved back home and, uh, I got involved in the real estate development world, working for my dad for a number of years. But the thing that kind of brought me back was I still had that like kind of creative itch that I wanted to scratch. Mm -hmm. And um, and so Bob and I always kept in touch. And so we uh, we linked up and started working on a couple projects together. And then um, it was just clear that our approach was very similar in the types of projects that we wanted to take on. Mm -hmm. um, and we also had, I think, the right amount of um, really like uh, emphasis on like concept versus um, deep experience in one kind of discipline. So mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that has served us well is that um, we're very conceptual thinkers and that, that allows us to um, develop ideas and, and concepts and, and, you know, avenues for organizations to kind of use this brand experience mindset even though we're not necessarily like web developers and mm. we're not necessarily like videographers or photographers or any of these things. Um, but we're kind of bridging all of those disciplines and fields of study together. And, and but starting with the concept and, and understanding just enough about an, enough different types of worlds that we can kind of link those together and mm. at least bring the team together from there to, to make it happen. So that's kind of my cutting ground in the, uh, in the rule 29 space, doing kind of the brand development world and then moving on to what we do now, which is brand experience. So, okay. So you get out of college, yeah. you start kind of working and like you said, cutting your teeth, getting experience in yeah. this world yeah. and then eventually have kind of a, um, change of direction, move home, yeah. work in essentially a different field, real estate yeah. development with your dad, yeah. but you're, keeping in touch with Bob and you guys are doing some kind of side yeah. thing. So it wasn't full time at that point. It was no. kind of just like, we're doing projects along the way. Yeah. Um, until you guys decided, all right, we're going to, yeah, we're, we're like-minded. We have the same vision mm -hmm. and we're going to now do this. Right. So what was that like going from, okay, I've got this, mm -hmm. you know, solid, stable job with my dad and I'm doing yeah. this thing that also makes money and, but is my passion to like, all right, we're sorry, dad, we're, we're jumping ship and we're going all in on this. It was definitely, um, a leap in so many different ways. I mean, uh, I think for me it was, uh, my dad's an, an incredible entrepreneur himself. Um, and so I think he saw the change happening mm -hmm. in me and me wanting to at least give whatever this was a shot. And like, even back then, like, it was like, well, I don't really know what I'm jumping ship to go do. You know, it was like a very kind of nebulous world that I wanted to explore. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously getting back into kind of the brand and creative space, but, um, 
Yeah, it was certainly a leap. I mean, I we were lucky enough to have um, a couple relationships with folks early on, so we kind of got got our feet wet with some some solid projects and a lot of folks that we're still working with today. Um, mm. And what's great is my partner Bob lives in Chicago, and so you know we kind of are able to tap into both Virginia Beach and the Chicago market. And so even now, like the majority of our clients are in Chicago because. Um, you know, that's kind of where my career started. That's where Bob lives. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I think the, the biggest change and evolution of that was, you know, it's, and this is what I tell other entrepreneurs that are making the journey or considering it is like, at some point you have to start doing some version of what you want to do, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and my wife is an incredible, um, support system for me. I mean, she was, she was the one that was more confident than I was that I should make the leap, you know? And, um, but I think what has, what I've learned is, um, having the confidence that at least you can start to figure it out step Mm. by step was crucial. And, um, and having confidence in yourself that, you know, this was like a big one for me, like, like having confidence that I could choose myself to do this work, you know, mm-hmm. like that I didn't have to wait to be hired for a position like this mm-hmm. that I wanted to kind of create, like um, having confidence that I could choose myself to, to do this work mm-hmm. or at least start to figure out how to get down the road of doing this type of thing. Yeah. Um, and so that's been, you know, that's a whole other story is like trying to be true to doing what we set out to do and, mm-hmm. and explore really creative work. Um, and do it on the terms that we want, you know, yeah, totally that. I think that's just a really profound piece that I'm sure, like you said, is yeah. a whole other journey of itself of yeah. coming to the place of feeling confident, mm-hmm. confident enough to, to like bet on yourself yeah. and say like, yeah. I can do this. Yeah. Like I can choose myself to do this work. And yeah. even if I don't have, you know, a through Z already like figured out, buttoned mm-hmm. up nice. I I've got A, B, and C and that and right. I'm confident enough that I can figure out D then E. Yes. And yes. um I think that that is a paralysis point for so many oh. people yeah. of like, I want to do this, but I don't have it all figured out, or I you know they're insecure that if they don't have all the external stuff in place, right. they won't be able to succeed. Oh, man. And really, it's it's the opposite. It, it if you are confident that you can do it, the external stuff you can figure out, yes. and will fall into place, and yeah. you'll make it happen. And um, but there is just a piece when you're going out on your own and you're saying, "I'm leaving a benefits package and yeah. stability and a salary." Yeah, you have to have that come to Jesus moment of like, "I can do this." Yeah, and I, I like I I speak to a lot of folks like you and I that are are doing this. And it's like, I believe strongly that, like you said, like the external stuff, that is almost like the second battle of the day. Like Mm -hmm. the first battle of the day is like getting your headspace in the, in the right, getting the right headspace to, um, to not be just paralyzed by Mm. fear, self doubt, you know, ambiguity, you know, like there's, you know, there's days where it feels like it's like a barrage of things that I'm fighting. Mm. Um, and I think that's so natural, you know, like mm-hmm. there isn't an entrepreneur that I know that doesn't go through that. And yeah, you know, there's folks out there that are like true killers. Like, you know, like, you know, there's these like salesman types that are just like, Oh, mm-hmm. I'm doing like, there is nothing standing in my way. More power to them. But like my journey has been totally one of, uh, you know, a constant process of, of pushing like a little bit beyond what I think Mm. I can do and like what's, what's, what's comfortable and, um, and yeah, like getting through those like demons and the, like the fight in your head first, just Mm. to like bring your best work to the table and like, yeah, cash flow and leads and all that stuff will like happen, but like you got to conquer up here first. Yeah, you'll, you'll figure out how to pay self-employment tax. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> you need to figure out how to like believe in yourself and, yeah. and get rid of. I I call that head trash. Where oh, like, yeah, totally. It's you're exactly just like nobody else is thinking it about you, but you're the yeah. one walking along your se- alongside yourself during the day, being like, no one's gonna. This isn't good, yeah. or no one's gonna bet on you, or or like you don't have what it takes, or yeah, no one's gonna pay that price for mm-hmm. you, and yeah, and it's such a soul journey to be like. No, I'm going to keep pushing through. Yeah. I'm going to keep like almost waging war. Yeah. And waging this, war is a great, great way to put in, it. In like my mind and in my heart to be like, I can do this. Yeah. I'm, especially when so many times, especially in like the earlier years, you don't have like a whole team of people who like all your systems in place. Yeah. It's like yeah. you and I, we, I mean, we work at the same co working space. And so yeah. we're like by ourselves most of the day. Totally. And so there's just, yeah, so much room for those thoughts to come in and i love just that thought of like the external stuff is the second battle yeah the first battle is every day saying like i can do this and (laughs) and pushing yourself truly like beyond what you think yeah you can do it which then is when it like the magic happens and when you're like this is so fun yeah i can't believe i did that or like i can't believe like i was able to go this far like push that limit or um just gets me jazzed as you can tell because i'm like sitting up in my chair like All right. What's um that's awesome so i had a question and oh it was going back to you it was a really small comment yeah but you mentioned just like my wife has been like my biggest support system yeah yeah um and i find that that ends up being one way or another like i rarely is it like my wife is you know my spouse is like meh about what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. It's typically like either this is really stressful on our marriage mm-hmm. for, for all the unknowns, for all the risk that's being taken yeah. or like they're my biggest fan and cheerleader and we can get through this. Um, yeah. So what has that looked like for you and your spouse? Yeah. Um, yeah. My wife, Allie is, she's an incredible person, but um, you know, I think my experience is mostly like in the creative world. I think this is true for anyone who has something they want to go out and do, like whether it's financial advising or the, whether it's, um, you know, shooting a documentary or, you know, starting a business, whatever it is. Like if, if the person that knows you best sees you when you're not doing that, or at least not moving towards that, mm-hmm. um, they can see like the slow death start to happen, mm-hmm. you know? And like, And I use that term like specifically because like it really felt like there was a very real part of myself and the way that my brain works that was like not being utilized and like slowly dying. Mm. And so she saw that happening even like more clearly probably than I did. And so even from like the initial conversations of like, Ali, you know, like I think what I'm doing now is not what I should be doing long term. Mm. And and she picked up on that immediately. Um, and you know, of course there's a lot of, um, late nights. There's a lot of like working overtime. There's a lot of, you know, coming home and being frustrated and, you know, the pep talks, you know, the need for pep talks Mm -hmm. never seem to end, but you know, she's, uh, she's been so instrumental in, being like a sounding board for me, like being even like an advisor for how I approach projects and Mm. like approach, um, you know, situations with my clients that I'm like working through or whatever it might be. Um, interestingly enough, like we do a lot of naming projects where we'll Mm. name products or we'll name new organizations. We're naming a, a cafe in Portland right now. And, um, and she's so good at naming. So like, I'll like, (laughs) you know, rip off like 25 names we're working on and she's, uh, and she's like, what about this? And it's like the best one on the list. So like, there's things like that, that she, uh, she's very good at. Um, but I think in general, the most powerful piece that I'm able to enjoy as, you know, as, as a husband is that she is a hundred percent committed to the mm. vision and like hundred percent committed to, um, me pushing forward towards reaching, um, you know, what the ultimate success point is going to be for us, you know, Mm -hmm. and not that I really know what that is quite yet, but like, um, she's always the one who's keep going. Mm -hmm. You can't give up now. Like, I'm so proud of you. You're doing great. Um, 
And so it, I, I don't think I would be doing this if it wasn't for her. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's the truth. Like, I don't think I would be strong enough mentally to, to push through. And that's the truth. So, yeah, that, I mean, that's amazing. And truly it, I feel like your spouse will either be like the gas on the fire yeah, or the like wet blanket on the fire. Yeah. And uh, just yeah. because like it, I mean, it's such obviously such an intimate and powerful mm -hmm. relationship that, I mean, you guys are one. And so like yeah. you have to be on board, your spouse has to be on board with the vision yeah, or else it's just not going to work. And I, I've experienced that with Lindy as well. Yeah. I mean, similarly, like this is a small aside, Lindy named Peace Link, like, Oh, I was, cool. I was like, yeah, looking so up like, I was like yeah. looking up like Greek words and all this yeah. stuff. I'm getting way too in the weeds. Um, but yeah, just having that person, you can come home at the end of the day after a day of battling your head trash. Yeah. Yeah. Who can like be a sounding board, can commiserate with you, can celebrate with you, can help yeah. you like, you know, I'm, I'm a total verbal processor yeah. and like word vomiter. And she's like, you know, have you thought about this? Or like, that's awesome. Or, and, yeah. um, which is amazing. Cause obviously like she doesn't have any finance degree. So like, sometimes I'm speaking Greek to her, yeah. but, <laughs> but she knows the vision of like what I want and how I care for my clients and what I want them to experience. Yeah. And she knows me and my strengths totally. and is a mirror. She's seeing the sides of me that I like, can't see of myself mm -hmm. because when we look in a mirror, a, we're not always, we're not, we're never actually seeing ourselves cause we're flipped. Right. But then like, I'm not seeing, my side or my back or anything like that. Yeah. And I think that's true of our strengths, of our weaknesses, of our personality, of our, mm -hmm. of our souls, like your, your spouse and the people closest to you can see the angles of you that you can't see of yourself. Right. And I think that's, what's profound about Allie seeing in you the, like your, your soul is slowly dying yeah. here. Yeah. Um, and I like what you said earlier about, you know, at some point you have to do what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had someone on the podcast who was saying that of like, yeah, take vacation, do all this stuff. People want to have a life outside of work, but so many people are just at work kind of dead in their eyes, mm -hmm. just doing work to get by, to pay their bills. Yeah. And it, it's like, you know, the people on their deathbed who say, you know, I, I wish I didn't spend as much time in the office, like mm -hmm. probably didn't have fulfilling work. Yeah. Yeah. And, sad. and to like do something you're passionate about, to have a spouse who can be there cheering you on and, and pushing you and have like the mental fortitude to like get through the mental yeah. blocks of that is, is just real. Like I appreciate this conversation because it's just so <laughs> like real. Cause you do see the people on LinkedIn and Instagram who are like, well, I'm doing awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and you're yeah. like, you probably woke up insecure today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. And it's like, you know, like if you or I were working like great corporate jobs, you know, like there's a very real like ego thing that you have to get over. And like, you know, our wives are so, you know, it's just like such a testament to the type of people that they are that mm -hmm. like, they're obviously not like worried about like, well, is Leland or Wills like a VP of whatever? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> no, you know, it's like, they're doing what they want to do. Like mm -hmm. the way that they were designed, you know, like mm. they're doing the work that they were designed to do. And like, and that is what they should be doing. Yeah. Like they, that care. To me is... they care more about like the flourishing of our souls and like yeah. us as people yeah. than whatever, like status or paycheck or, yeah. you know, yeah. and obviously we want like at the end of the day, I would love to have a great paycheck as of well, course. You know? of course. <laughs> but I want to, yeah. uh, not at the expense of, yeah. you know, doing what I'm passionate about right. or, you know, coming alive the way that I want to and, yeah. and feel drawn to. So going back to your business, mm -hmm. just the like comprehensive brand experience yeah. and, you know, I'm curious selfishly, yeah. <laughs> what kind of advice would you have? Or like for someone who is in that process, mm -hmm. which I think that process is probably an ongoing process. Oh, I feel yeah. like it, even just as I've been in my business. I feel like the experience has changed. I've changed and grown. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess like, how would you lead someone through that? What, what advice would you have for yeah. someone when they're 
running a brand and yeah. running an experience? Well, I think <clears throat> there's two things. Um, uh, the first is that is the realization that, um, and I don't even know if this is helpful, but like, to me, this is such an important piece of it. Like in the, it has a translation to like a smaller business, but like every major organization in the world is thinking about brand experience. Mm. Like Target is thinking about it. Coca-Cola is thinking about it. Apple is thinking about it. Um, and the my reason for saying that is like, this thing has an impact on like how a brand is perceived in the world. And mm -hmm. like on a smaller scale, um, as if you're, you know, small organization or you know you're working kind of a, a niche local field or whatever it might be um don't negate the opportunity to do things a little bit differently and to mm -hmm. think about that comprehensive vision of like what is like what is the experience i want to deliver people like so often we get stuck in the in the weeds of of um the operations, doing the work, like, oh, well, I need like three marketing pieces and then like I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know, I think when you when you kind of realize like, you no, know, like on a macro scale, like organizations are thinking about this. I need to be thinking about this in a at least a thoughtful way. Even though I can't spend the money that Target or or Coca-Cola or any of these other brands are spending, mm -hmm. I can still think about what is like what are the different touch points that I can establish? You mm -hmm. know, like how can I invite people into an experience where um, they feel cared for, where, it, you know, I feel like it's, it's representing what I want to uh, deliver to people. Um, and yeah, just riff a little bit on getting creative about what those things could be. Could I do events in a, in a unique or interesting way? Um, can I explore video? Can my website do different things rather than just be like a couple images and a video on a, you know, on a website? Totally. Um, and so that's the first thing. The second thing is um, don't be afraid to lean into your uniqueness as um, as an organization, number one, um, but also like you as a, as a leader, if you're in kind of like a leadership role and it's your own brand, like try to explore ways to highlight, celebrate, play with your uniqueness as an individual mm -hmm. and kind of what you bring to those experiences. I think a lot of times, and I fall into this too, like you get so professional and you get so kind of locked into, I need to present myself this way because I've seen other successful people do it this way. Mm -hmm. And I want to be this way with my clients or <laughs> my audience or whatever it might be. And I think there's so much room to, um, to play, to differentiate yourself and, and kind of draw from the uniqueness of yourself that, and that is ultimately what connects with people is like, um, and, and particularly on like a small business scale where you, often you're the person that's mm -hmm. engaging with folks is like, you know, what is, what is kind of interesting, quirky, unique, memorable about me that can be brought to the conversation and I can kind of use to separate myself from mm -hmm. the multitudes of other people that, you know, are trying to, look like at all you know they're trying to look like each other you know and then yeah. this this crowded space so those are the two things that i would recommend and um and give yourself time to to ideate explore try things um this element of like play is a huge thing that we work through with our clients is mm -hmm. like injecting injecting communications with a sense of playfulness and fun and like personality that mm -hmm that is kind of hard to hard to find in a lot of these more structured corporate environments. Gosh, there's just so much. You guys are going to see Peace Link in a, in a whole new light. After this. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, especially in my field, like financial planning, yeah. people expect like a mahogany desk, totally. like suit jacket. And that is something I'm trying to do different where I'm like, oh, I just like, that's, I hate that. I feel dumb yeah. when I'm sitting across a mahogany table from someone in a suit and tie. I'm like, I clearly you're a, a god and i'm an idiot yeah. um so i don't want that to be the experience but there's just so much there of like i love the idea of of playing and experimenting and yeah. just realizing like you can grow and change and this can grow and change with you yeah. 
because I'm not naturally that way. I'm naturally like, I need to have it figured out yeah, and build it and work it systematized. And obviously things like processes are good, but I just love that idea of like every living thing grows and changes. Yeah. Like trees, plants, mm -hmm. humans, rocks, they're not alive. They don't grow and change. It's going to stay the same. Right. Right. And your business, your organization is a living thing. And so it's going to grow. It's going to change. You can kind of play with it. You can think about, you know, who it is, who you are mm -hmm. and bring that out. Which probably just also makes it more natural for you. Like, oh, yeah. Like, natural for the entrepreneur to be like, all right, this is my brand, doing it my way, and it's highlighting the, my quirks and personality. Yeah. So I don't feel like I need to button up the tie and like yeah. act, talk differently and walk differently and, you know, yeah. puff out my chest. Um, well, it's so funny. Like, even a lot of our engagements kind of start with a really in depth, and it can get heated, like this in-depth um, <laughs> workshop where we dig into the brand and we mm. dig into the leadership team. We dig into um, their strategy and like, and like ultimately like what, where we try to get to is like, we try to strip away, like stop talking like business talk, like mm -hmm. stop talking to me like I'm a client, you know, stop talking to me like, you know, like you're, you're, you're having a conversation with a Forbes editor, you know, like, um, try to get to like the heart, the narrative, like the reason for being, and that stuff mm -hmm. is, is so hard to get to, but like, that's where the magic is. It's like, I talk about, um, like when we lead our clients through some type of like brand building workshop or like, you know, discovery process, <clears throat> the, like the first question that we ask usually is like, why are we doing this? Mm. Not why are we doing this brand building exercise, but like, why are you guys spending 60 hours a week doing this job? Mm. You know, like, why is it this? You guys are obviously smart. You're obviously educated. You're obviously could do literally anything in the world mm. that you want to do. So why are we doing this? Like, why are we delivering this technology? Why are we building this piece of office furniture? Why are we starting this cafe? Why are we, um, you know, we work with this artist, um, called David Wallace Haskins and, um, we're kind of doing this fun exercise even now of like, why this work? Like why, why produce your art in this way? And like in this medium and mm -hmm. like, what is it about the work that you're creating that, um, that is true to you, you know, like, and so to your point, it's like, how do we get back to the personal motivations that are driving your work and mm -hmm. how do we figure out how to talk about those and how to bring those to life in new and interesting ways. And that's, you know, as humans, we're like so wired to put up the, this is what I want people to, you know, put on the mask, put on the mask. And, um, and that's really fun. It's like to get into the real stuff um, mm -hmm. with our clients. Gosh, which is also like, I see why that would get heated. Like it's so, that's oh, yeah. so vulnerable. Yeah to like take off the masks and yeah. go back to like, who am I? Why am I doing this? Yeah. And to feel like, I feel like in your process, there has to come a point where they, they get to the realization of like, we've left that. Yeah. We left the original joy of why I did this behind. And we want to like come back to highlighting that mm -hmm. yeah. somewhere along the way. We, we started figuring out we need to do this out of the, the other, or like you said, another professional and doing the same thing. Yeah has found the secret sauce. And so we're yeah. doing their thing mm -hmm. and we've lost our own voice and identity in the mix. Right. Right. Um, that's completely vulnerable. Oh, like, yeah. That's completely it's scary. Yeah. You know, totally. Especially to me. And they like, they often don't know me, you know, it's like, <laughs> I'm asking them to share their deepest, darkest, like heart motivations. But yeah, I think that's a necessary step to any kind of, you know, development of what a brand is and how mm -hmm. it should act and interact. Yeah. Totally. That, I mean, it's just so profound. I, I see now why it's so much more like why you're going beyond just like web development yeah. and font, yeah. <laughs> but like into this is a whole experience. This is, this is identity work. Yeah. Like yeah. your identity as an entrepreneur, what you want the identity of this business to be. Mm -hmm. um, I mean like that, 
is revolutionary. And I think probably like, I think I said this earlier, like frees up the entrepreneur to like almost get past a lot of the head trash because some of the head trash is I need to act a certain way. I need to look a certain way. Yeah. And so to like come in and be like, who are you? Like, mm -hmm. what are you hoping to accomplish? Why are we doing this? Yeah. And to help them kind of get to a place where they can explore, like you're shepherding them through like exploring these things mm -hmm. to ultimately get to a place where their, their business is more them. Yeah. And therefore is more free and fun. Yeah. <laughs> like just more enjoyable as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. to run a business that is you and like yeah. true to you. That's awesome. That's powerful, powerful work. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so fun. I mean, it's like the best. And that's like what I love about it is it's um, there's so much variety and there's so many different possibilities to explore with our clients. And um, and yeah, I think that's like what keeps me coming back to it is like the way we work with one client and like the things that we unearth with them are like completely different than someone else. And, um, and that variety is for like the way that I, I need to kind of work throughout the, you know, mm -hmm. from day to day, that's, that's really, it's intoxicating, you know, is that like mm -hmm. variety and, and the change. I can only imagine how rewarding it is to see some of these yeah. things go from like death to life with yeah. like that experience. And I'm, I'm struck by in that, like the variety, everyone's different. Like you probably have to have some wisdom and self-control to say like, I, I can't put my own opinions oh, yeah. in there. I'm sure you're like in situations where you're like, Oh, I would do it this way. Or like, mm -hmm. I get excited about this part of your business or, yeah. but my job isn't to do that. My yeah. job is to like, listen to you, mm -hmm. make this about you and carry out like your dreams. Yeah. So like you almost have to step outside yourself mm -hmm. when you're working and be like, all right, who is this person? I, I feel that in my own job oh, where yeah. like, I obviously have my own opinions on, you know, should you save for your kids college or mm -hmm. things like that? But yeah. my job is not to impress my beliefs on you. My job is to hear like what you want out of life and right. structure your finances to do that. And there's something about that that is so fun and takes like a level of the ability to step outside yourself yeah. and say like, all right, Leon's aside, who is this person? How do I care for this person? It's, mm -hmm. it's totally like caring deeply for someone. Yeah. And I think even to your point too, like you, um, in your case, like you bring um, a strategic perspective mm -hmm. that, um, that is crucial to that, you know, to that puzzle, like, um, you know, you're able to see, you're able to see goals and desires and, um, and priorities, but like, but you approach those of, of you approach solving those and meeting those goals through the lens of, you know, the strategy, you know, mm -hmm. and like, that's how your brain works is like, okay, I see, I see goal and outcome that we want to, um, deliver. Here's how we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, connecting, connecting reality to outcome. Mm -hmm. Your, your job is, is building the strategy to get there. And I mm -hmm. think, um, that is, that is the sweet spot is like when, when those three things are so aligned and you as, as the guide kind of, taking people through that journey where you can line each of those up in a really powerful way. Mm. Um, and that's, I mean, that's an incredible skill that you possess. I appreciate that. Yeah. I feel like honestly that three point thing is probably exactly what you're doing too, Yeah. but you're also helping people. Like if I'm seeing the goal and creating the strategy, you're like helping them discover the goal as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you're kind of unearthing that they're kind of like a wanderer yeah. who kind of got off and are like, I don't even really know where I want to go at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah. And you're kind of helping them establish that. Yeah. And then helping them say like, all right, you're at point A. You're we've we've learned through discovery you're trying to get to point B. Mm -hmm. And here's the hundred ways you can do that. But right. for you, the smoothest path is going to be along this road right here. Right. Yeah. Um and even like in the case of we work with a company called Fellas Brands and they um they yeah, they they're office equipment manufacturer and um do desk tables shredders a lot of 
really interesting um, office products and, and capabilities. But uh, what's fun with them is like now we're kind of involved even from like the product concept phase mm. where they're like, hey, we have this idea for this thing um, and we want to figure out how to talk about it. You know, or like, yeah, we want to, we want to name it, you know, we want to, we want to ha- assign it like an identity and we want to, um, we want to kind of position it in the marketplace in a, in a really compelling way. Help us figure out how to talk about it mm-hmm. help us figure out, um, help us connect like the pain points that we built this thing for and how to talk about it in the marketplace. And so, you know, if there's ever like building yeah. that strategy to get there, it's that, um, yeah. And that stuff is really fun too, because it's like very specific, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, it's like a very specific product that serves a very specific purpose and, um, and being able to kind of help craft that, that mm. progression from like, we have this idea and I, then like, I it's going to be reality. launched. Yeah. yeah. It's like going to be launched in like eight months. And like, how are we going to get there? It's really fun. That's awesome. Yeah. So on your journey, um, through self-employment, through, yeah. you know, honestly doing your own brand yeah. identity. What surprised you the most? How hard it is. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's incredibly hard. Mm. And like the, um, in what ways there's obviously like, you know, like any business, like cash flow. like mm-hmm. what is more, like what is harder to figure out the cash flow at times. But like, um, I think for me, the biggest, uh, I think the, the hardest part, um, shout out, uh, this American life, our glass, our glass talks about, um, this gap between your taste as, and purely from like the creative, the creative role that I play often, like there's a gap between your taste and your, um, ability to execute on that taste. Mm-hmm. And so what he talks about is how like you have, you have incredible taste of, of like what good is, you know, as, as for good creative, like for, for good output, you have a great taste for that, right? Your ability to paint the picture that you can see in your head or, you know, make the thing that you know that it should be and can be and will be, there's a gap there. Mm. And so, the work of any creative person is like trying to close that gap between Mm -hmm. your taste and your ability to execute. Wait, no, I have this inverted. (laughs) So your, your taste is up here and your, your capability to execute on that taste is down Mm -hmm. here. And so the hard thing for me is like building processes and building teams and building, um, capabilities to where we can close that gap Mm -hmm. faster, um, between, like I can see what it needs to be. Like I can see what this brand, where they need to go. And like the comprehensiveness of like what this could be, you know, like, Mm. and then, but like executing on that is such a team effort and such like a pulling in so many different stakeholders. Um, uh, and that's just really hard to do. And it takes time to, um, to, uh, build, yeah, build the teams that, that can help me kind of achieve that goal, how to communicate myself enough to get that idea signed off on by my client. Mm. Um, all of those things are, are really, really challenging. And so Mm. that closing the gap idea is the big one for me. Yeah. And I don't expect it to close anytime soon, but like, (laughs) if it ever will, it's like, yeah. Cause even I feel like once you get close, the taste will change. Oh yeah. The like bar will move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Cause we're always, especially as a creative, like always, your mind is always creating. Mm-hmm. It's always aspiring differently. Right. And so I'm like, you're closing this gap and then you'll get close to that. And then it'll like, yes, your mind will be like, unlock the next level. Yeah. <laughs> unlock yeah. the next avatar. I mean, for instance, like we, we came up with this amazing concept, um, for one of our clients, um, for how to explain a really complex idea. Mm-hmm. And, um, and the concept was like beautiful and like, but now we're in like 
the challenge of trying to figure out how to pull it off. And it's mm -hmm. like so frustrating because like you can see it, you know, like you can see how it needs to come together and how elegant and beautiful and like simple and all that it's going to be. But like, this is, you know, any artist or any kind of creative person knows getting from brain to real life is really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is what I'm fighting now is like closing that gap between mm -hmm. vision, taste and, and execution. Mm -hmm. That's hard. Man. Yeah. Was there a low point for you on the journey so far? Um, yeah, I mean, just moments of sheer frustration working at 4 a.m. and, you know, you know, like the frustration of just, you know, not growing up and not making the process that I should have made mm. six months earlier, you know, and like that would have probably gotten me out of this situation that mm -hmm. I'm in right now. Um, you know, I, I'm like the type of person that like, I, I just pull it all on myself and like, you know, I'm historically like not the best at um, delegating and all that just because I care so much about it, you know, mm -hmm. and like, I want it to be, again, I want it to be like at that level that it should be. Um, and so just, yeah, just being an idiot and taking on too much or just being an entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. That too. <laughs> and yeah, that's been, that's been some really like frustrating times where mm -hmm. I'm just like, why do I put myself in this situation mm -hmm. where, you know, I'm, I'm working. Yeah. I'm like swimming against the tide kind of feels like sometimes with, um, taking on too much and, and, and not planning. In the, in the way that I should, you know. Gosh, that's that is like a whole podcast oh, in and of itself. Maybe like, like a six novel, you know, six book series <laughs> yeah. of like, you know, how you delegate when. Yeah. You know the like level of of um, perfection you desire, yeah. like you know the quality you desire. You have the taste, yeah, and systems in place and planning. Like, oh man, it's yeah. Like, the best when it's figured out and the worst when you're in yeah. that place, but it's just honestly such a very real growing pain. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's like, you know, shout out city of Virginia beach, maybe sharing too much here, but like, you know, like I didn't submit the like business property tax form on mm. time, you know? And so they hit me with the, uh, uh, you know, the, the average of my industry or whatever. And I'm like, that's a lot of zeros behind that number. And, um, yeah. And just like having to deal with that. I'm just like, what, why do I do this? Yeah. You know, okay. totally. thank you. Um, I'm not going to disclose your name in the, uh, in the, the treasurer's office, but thanks for helping me figure that out. <laughs> but you know, it's like examples like that where it's just, um, yeah, it's just feeling like what I, the phrase I keep coming back to is like, just not growing up and mm -hmm. like building the process that I need to be building now. So it will save me in three months or, mm -hmm. you know, in a year or whatever. Totally. That's so hard. Um, so this is a podcast about success. Yeah. But if you pull anybody on the side of the road and say, mm -hmm. you know, what is success? Yeah. You're going to get different answers. It means different things to different people. Yeah. So how would you define success for yourself and how will you know if or when you achieve it? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, um, I think there's two parts of it for us. Like we intentionally don't work with a ton of clients. Mm -hmm. Um, we work with, you know, about five clients, but like, we're so embedded in their organizations at this point. Like, um, and the reason for that is there's a couple of reasons. One, we, we really want to understand them like almost better than they understand themselves. Like we want to be able to see through those facades and like, we really want to understand the business um, and the world that they're playing in and all of that. And so just by means of, you know, capacity, if we're to do that, and we believe that's the way that creative partners should work with our clients, then we're only going to work with a handful of them mm -hmm. um, that, that really trust us. And w which takes us to that, the first point, um, and I think success in our context is like that we, uh, that we have such a rapport with our clients and that they 
they trust that we know them so well and that, um, that, that we are thinking beyond project scope, that we're thinking beyond, mm. you know, even beyond like, you know, the problem that we're trying to solve right now, that we're thinking down the road of like, where do you need to be that we can, um, have a seat at the highest tables of that organization to mm. like, um, to pitch ideas, to, um, to make suggestions for their corporate strategy, to, um, help them kind of approach the next year, three years, five years in a more, um, uh, in a more kind of brand focused way. Like if we can, and we're getting there with a couple of our clients, but like that to me is where that's when success, you know, like you reach that success mm -hmm. threshold is like, when you have such a strong connection and trust with your client that like you can pitch them on ideas mm -hmm. that even aren't even warranted and they hear them, they consider them. We talk about them, try to explore them. Um, that's like when those moments happen, like that's when I'm like, Oh man, we're, we're in there now. Like mm -hmm. this is, this is what we should be doing. Um, Cause you just get out of like the RFP, you know, mm -hmm. like, we're a contractor that's working for you for this content, you know, this duration. Um, we really want to get to that place where we're, we're at the table with our clients and like helping them approach the future in a really thoughtful way. Um, the second, second thing for us is, um, having the freedom, uh, and it's again, kind of goes back to, um, like the personality thing is like, we really want the freedom to, uh, explore like self-initiated projects, mm -hmm. how we want. And, um, my partner, Bob is like working on this golf app right now, which is like an awesome project. Um, that we'll have to share a little bit about in the coming months, but you know, he's a big golfer and this was like a passion project that he really wanted to explore building an app, like a phone app and like building like the social element into it. And, uh, and that's like a great example of like, we should be exploring that. Mm. And even if it's not paying, you know, like, um, in the same way we're, uh, we're working with, um, we're doing some work for this, uh, this whiskey keep in a um, prohibition era building in, in Wheaton, Illinois called suburban and it's in like the lower level it's called suburban do you get the pun oh yeah <laughs> took, and, me, took me a minute yeah you, no, had to, no. you had to tell me there was a pun there no, right, right. <laughs> no but um this you know this is like just another like fun thing you know yeah. it's like we're building this this immersive in um space where you know it's a members only whiskey bar and like the lower <laughs> in like the basement area of uh which was up until I think like, I don't know, I need to check my dates on this, but like this was like a dry city for like 200 years. But, um, but yeah, and so we're able to like think through the entire experience of this space in a really thoughtful way. And, you know, again, these are not like paying projects, but these are just fun. And mm -hmm. like, because we want to push the boundary of like, like how can we build the experience of like walking into an elevator and like going down to this, this lower level of a, space and like the entire thing just feels like you're in this prohibition era like um seller you know like bourbon seller you know That's and like stuff like that is so fun that and we want the freedom to be able to do that something i'm struck by with you like that's so cool is none of those answers were like when i make enough money to do x when i like yeah. I mean, literally the second one is like, we want to be free to like do these unpaid not projects. Get paid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, like do these things that are just passion like we're passionate about and not worry about like the money piece. But even like, you know, when when we have so many clients, you're like when we have less clients and we know them, like we have such yeah. a deep relationship with them yeah. that we can anticipate their needs before they do. Yeah. And like when we're freed up to explore creativity mm -hmm. how we want even if it's not paying us like to do yeah. self-initiated projects and like, that's a real, that's a real success there. Cause that's success mm -hmm. of the mind and the heart. And, and so often it, people feel like success is so tied to, mm -hmm. you know, when we can 
have enough money that we can like work part time or we can, you know, yeah. So often, even if it's, I want to be able to make the money that I'm then free to do something else. Money comes in at some point, And I just love that your answer was mm-hmm. so earnest and there wasn't even a thought of money involved. Right. It was just like, this is what success is to me mm-hmm. is to know my clients so well yeah. that I can anticipate their needs, come to them with ideas and to be freed up to just explore creativity as a creative mm-hmm. on whatever project I want. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Man, I could talk to you for days. <laughs> Me too. I mean, it's just like there has been so much good stuff here and what you do is powerful and fascinating and you're so well spoken about it. Um, so thank you so much for being on the podcast. Uh, thanks today. for having me, Leland. I really enjoyed it. Oh, man.